Chapter 9 of Nature's Miracles Familiar Talks on Science, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Familiar Talks on Science by Elisha Gray. Chapter 9 Cloud Formation Continued. As water in its condensed state is 815 times heavier than air, the question naturally comes to one why it does not immediately fall to the earth when it condenses. There are at least two and probably more stages of condensation. Investigators into the phenomenon of cloud formation claim to have ascertained that the first effect of condensation is to form little globes of moisture that are hollow, like a bubble, with very thin walls. Everyone has recognized the ease with which a soap bubble will float in the air, and yet it is simply a film of moisture. These little balloons, so to speak, are called spherules. It is undoubtedly the case that mingled with these little bubbles of moisture there are fine particles of solid water hanging on and carried along with them. Undoubtedly this is true. At least, just before the final act of condensation takes place, and when the little hollow spherules collapse, they are gathered together in drops of water larger or smaller, according to the rapidity of condensation. There is probably another power at work to prevent the too ready precipitation of moisture when condensed, and that is the wind. A cloud never stands still, although in some cases it may appear to do so. If we take a stone in our hand, and allow it to drop without applying any force to it, it will fall directly to the ground. But if we give it an impetus in a horizontal direction, it will travel some distance before striking the ground. If we could give the same impetus to a body as light as a globule of water dust, it would probably travel indefinitely without falling. Dust that would settle directly to the ground from an elevation in still air would travel thousands of miles without falling before a wind having any considerable velocity. Suppose the sun to be shining with intense heat upon a certain area of the earth's surface and the conditions to be right for very rapid evaporation of moisture. The air which is heated close to the ground, being expanded, will rise, together with the invisible particles of moisture, and there will be a column of moisture-laden air continually ascending until it reaches a point in the upper atmosphere where it is condensed into a cloud that takes on the billowy form which in summer time we call a thunder cloud, but which in the science of meteorology is called cumulus or heap cloud. If there were no air currents, this billowy cloud would stand as the capping of an invisible pillar of ascending vapour, but as it is never the case that air is not moving at some velocity in the upper regions, it floats away as rapidly as it is formed. This peculiar kind of cloud is formed in the mid-regions of the atmosphere, and it is a summer cloud as well as a land cloud. Of course, it may float off over the ocean and maintain its peculiar shape for a certain distance, but it is rare that such a cloud will ever be seen in mid-ocean or in mid-winter. As the warm season advances in summer, and evaporation from the earth is less than the rainfall, there is less and less moisture in the air, when, of course, the conditions for cloud formation, especially inland, are not so favourable as in the early spring or summer. Frequently there comes a time when we have a long season of dry, settled weather. Probably during most of the days clouds will form and we think it is going to rain, but before night they have vanished, and the same thing is repeated the next day and the next, perhaps for weeks at a time. The explanation is this. We have already said that so long as the air remains in a uniform condition as to temperature, it will absorb moisture in a transparent state until it is filled to the measure of its capacity at a given temperature. If there were no change of temperature, it would not condense into cloud. Clouds may be absorbed into the atmosphere, or evaporated, and become invisible, and this process is going on to a greater or less degree continually. If we watch the steam as it escapes from a steam boiler, the first effect is condensation into cloud, but as it floats away it gradually melts and is absorbed into the atmosphere as invisible vapour. This is especially true on a warm day. 
the same process takes place in the air that is going on at the level of a body of water or at the surface of moist earth as before stated condensation always takes place when a body of moisture laden air comes in contact with cold when the steam escapes from a boiler even on the hottest day it is hotter than the surrounding air the first effect is condensation and then evaporation takes place the same as it would at the surface of the earth when the condensed particles of moisture are separated into the invisible atoms that accompany evaporation in settled dry weather as the sun approaches the zenith the earth becomes intensely heated and there is an ascending column of air partly laden with moisture but not to the same extent as earlier in the season condensation takes place and clouds are formed but as there is not sufficient moisture to carry them to the point of a further condensation which would result in precipitation as the sun lowers in the west and the heated air becomes more evenly distributed this condensed vapour is reabsorbed into the air as invisible moisture by a process allied to that of evaporation this condition of things would extend to a much longer period than it does in our latitude if it were not for the gradual changing of the seasons which finally destroys the balance in the dynamics of cloudland and allows the cold that has been held back for the time in the great northern zone to get the upper hand then we have what is termed in common parlance a change in the weather or more properly in this case a change in the season we have already spoken of the cloud called cumulus which means heap and of its performance during the dry season of summer there is another form of cloud that is seen at this season of the year called cirrus a curl it takes the form of a curl at its ends this cloud usually has a threaded shape and sometimes takes the form of a feather and frequently forms are seen that remind you of frost pictures on a window pane these clouds float very high in the atmosphere away above the tops of the highest mountains from six to eight miles above the level of the sea they are formed only at a season of the year when the atmospheric conditions are most uniform at certain times of the day and night the moisture will rise to this height before it condenses and when it does condense it immediately freezes which makes it take on these peculiar forms that would no doubt conform very closely to the frost pictures on the window pane if it were not for the disturbing influences of air currents at this altitude the fact that they are ice or frost clouds instead of water clouds gives them that peculiar whiteness and brightness of appearance if ordinary clouds are water dust these high clouds may be called ice dust sometimes we see them lying in bands or threads running across the sky in the direction that the wind blows their form is undoubtedly a resultant of the struggle between the air currents and the tendency of crystallized water to arrange itself in certain definite lines or forms this cloud may be said to be one extreme having its home in the highest regions of cloudland while the cumulus or thunder cloud is the other extreme and occupies the lower or mid regions of the air there is a still lower cloud of course as ordinary fog is nothing more than cloud which under certain conditions lies on the surface of the ocean or dry land fogs prevail when the barometer is low as soon as it rises from the source of evaporation the moisture condenses almost to the point of precipitation there is not enough buoyancy in its globules when the air is light as it is when we have a low barometer to cause the fog to float into the higher regions of the atmosphere the high clouds which are called cirrus under certain conditions drop down to where they begin to melt into ordinary moisture globules and while this process is going on we have a combined cloud effect which is called cirrostratus this form of cloud may be recognized when looking off towards the horizon by its being formed into long straight bands it is sometimes called thread cloud as it further descends it takes on a different form called the cirrocumulus or curl heap this is just the opposite in its appearance to the cirrostratus as it is broken up into flocks of little clouds separated from each other and in the act of changing to the form of the cumulus or billowy form of cloud and this latter takes place when it drops to a still lower stratum of warmer air and is there called the cumulostratus which is the form of cloud we most often see in the season of thunderstorms 
the lower edge of the cloud is straight parallel with the horizon while the upper part is made up of great billowy masses having high lights upon their well-defined projections and blending into darker shades caused by the shadows in the valleys between the mountains of cloud the rain cloud is called the nimbus and may be said to be the extension of a cumulostratus when it reaches this condition it is condensed to a point where the vesicular globules collapse and a number of them run together forming a solid drop of water and here it begins to fall it may be very small at first but in its fall other condensed globules will adhere to it and if the conditions are right sometimes the raindrops will have the diameter of a quarter of an inch by the time they reach the earth under other conditions such as we have sometimes during dry weather the raindrops will start to fall but instead of growing larger they grow smaller by absorption into the thirsty air and will not be allowed to reach the earth often there are showers of rain in the air that fall to a certain distance and are taken up as in the process of evaporation to again be formed into cloud without ever having touched the earth thus it will be seen that clouds assume various forms under various conditions of atmosphere as it is related to moisture temperature and density clouds sometimes appear to be stationary when they are only continually forming on one side and continually being absorbed into invisible moisture on the other i remember seeing some wonderfully beautiful cloud effects in the regions of the alps almost every day in summer there appears above the peak of mount blanc a beautifully formed cloud cap standing some distance above it and hollowed out underneath like an inverted cup although this cloud appears to be stationary it is undergoing a rapid change the moisture rises from the snow-capped peak as invisible vapour to a certain distance where it is condensed into a cloud of wonderful brilliancy as the cloud globules float upward they are absorbed into the atmosphere again as invisible moisture at the upper limit of the cloud if the wind happens to be blowing another phenomenon takes place giving the appearance somewhat of a volcano it is blown off from the peak in the direction of the wind but within a short distance it strikes a warmer stratum of air where it is absorbed and assumes the transparent condition if we ascend a high mountain we get some idea of the altitude of the various forms of cloud a thunderstorm may be in progress far below us while the sun may be shining from a clear sky above with perhaps the exception of the frost clouds that we have referred to floating high above the mountain tops we have now described in a general way how clouds are formed how they are condensed into rain and how moisture is distributed over large areas by these rain clouds being borne on the wings of the wind and now you ask whence the wind in our next and following chapters we will try to answer this question end of chapter nine